a new way of growing microgreens that's both easy and rewarding. Let's look at growing microgreens. So we're using three aluminum trays each for growing each set of microgreens. Now these are easily available at Costco at a very decent price, but you can find them at any grocery stores or any other store that sells baking materials. And I'll explain you what each of these trays is used for. Let's take one tray and drill some holes. This will be the tray where we will be planting our microgreens and they need drainage. And here's the material we need to use for our growing medium. We'll be using cocoa core. We need to use fine cocoa core. We got our cocoa core from Vermisterra. You can easily get this cocoa core online or at your local gardening stores. And remember that we are not adding our cocoa core directly to the growing tray. Rather, we are measuring it out and I'll shortly explain you why. And we pre-soak the seeds for about four to six hours. These are fenugreek seeds, but you can pre-soak any seed that you want to plant. And now we start assembling the tiers. And this is our growing tier. There's a bottom tier that will be used to water the microgreens and drain excess water. We have the growing tier, which is the central tier. And on top of that, our new method also uses a third tier, which we'll get to shortly. Now we add the cocoa core to the central tier, the second tray of the microgreens that we're using. And you can get this cocoa core at vermisterra.com. Use coupon code CAG for getting 10% off your order. This is a great quality growing medium for microgreens. And you can then add vermicompost. Now earthworm castings provide very good nutrition to your plants. Now technically microgreens do not need any kind of nutrition, but you'll shortly see why we are adding the worm castings. And that is if you want to go a step further and grow your plants slightly larger than microgreens, then these earthworm castings play a very important role in providing nutrition to your microgreens so that they grow larger. Once again, these earthworm castings are from Vermisterra. You can go to vermisterra.com and use coupon code CAG to get 10% off your entire order. And you can create your own earthworm castings at home if you have a worm farm at home. But in this case, we are using the worm castings from Vermisterra. Now, these are the seeds that we had soaked. We are adding them all around our growing medium. And you don't have to be very specific, but you need to scatter the seeds evenly around the surface. And these microgreens will be growing quite close to each other. And that's just the nature of how microgreens grow. So make sure you spread the seeds evenly around so that your microgreens can grow easily. And we then just spray some water on the surface of the seeds. Now this is important in the first couple of days just because you need adequate moisture for the seeds to germinate properly. And this new method also involves a third tray as you can see. And this third tray will be used on top of the second tray. And what we'll be doing is applying some pressure using some pavers. And while it looks a little harsh, this weight, this added weight, will not only disperse the seeds equally around the growing medium, but also result in very good quality microgreens. And now let's look at the progress our microgreens have made, starting with the fenugreek microgreens. And we'll shortly show you how the pea microgreens grew later as well. So the pavers need to be intact for about two days. This is what we have done here. And once you remove the pavers, the weight has now distributed all the microgreen seeds around the surface and as you can see some have started germinating and the ones that are stuck to the top part of the aluminum tray the base of the first tier can be just dropped down into the growing area and make sure that you mist very well these microgreens in the initial stage need a lot of water the seeds need a lot of water to germinate to make sure that you have adequate moisture just use this kind of a misting bottle and apply evenly so that the entire area is misted well. And also starting the second day, you can make sure that the bottom part of the microgreens growing tray is evenly moist by adding a bottle of water to the bottom tray. This is our watering tray. And by mostly using the third tray to water, we will be avoiding mold growth in these microgreens. Now three days in sowing, you can see that the plants have now started growing, the seedlings have started growing. And we need to water the bottom tray once again. This is to avoid growth of any mold or bacteria in the top tray. 
and we need to repeat watering our microgreens in the bottom tray every day. Now the microgreens will start looking more green and more healthy as days go by and each day you can see that they're becoming more and more nicer looking, thicker looking and they will also start consuming more water as they become large. So make sure that you're adding more and more water onto the bottom tray and keep checking the bottom tray to make sure that the water has been absorbed. And if you see all the water has been sucked in by the microgreens that are growing, then just add in some more water. Now each microgreen has its own nutrition value and most microgreens can be harvested within about 7 to 15 days of growing. In this case, the fenugreek microgreens take about 15 days to grow. Whereas some microgreens like radish microgreens will give you microgreens within about 7 days or so. Now here you can see it's been 8 days since we sowed the seeds. And they're looking very nice. All the microgreens are looking very nice. And they're almost looking like they're exploding with growth in this growing tray. And once again as days go by. You need to keep checking the moisture level for these plants and make sure that you are adding enough water in the bottom watering tray. And the seeds itself will have a lot of nutrition to grow to this stage. And as I mentioned, if you want to use these as microgreens alone, you can start harvesting them in about 14 to 15 days. As you see here at this stage, the plant has now grown quite large. So you can harvest it at this time to use them as microgreens. But we are going to take it a step further. We are going to see how you can grow these microgreens a little bit more to harvest slightly larger plants. And once again, microgreens are just smaller versions of the same plants that grow larger. You can see some roots here at the bottom. They do suck in a lot of water. So make sure that you keep the bottom tray nicely watered. So we took it a step further and we waited for 25 days to make sure that the microgreens grew a little larger. And once again, we could have harvested these as microgreens at 15 days. But we waited a little longer for this to grow a little taller. And at 30 days, finally, we are now harvesting our microgreens. So the choice is yours. You can either wait for 15 days and harvest these as fenugreek microgreens. Or wait for another 15 days. Let these grow a little larger so that you can get more greens. So what you want to do is entirely up to you. Your objective, your goal is entirely up to your growing needs. But if I was growing some other microgreens like radish or lettuce or any other microgreen like broccoli microgreens for example, then I would be harvesting this earlier, especially if I was eating it raw. So as you can see, we are harvesting our fenugreek greens here and they look amazing. And fenugreek has a lot of health benefits. It's used in a lot of dishes that we cook. And I've also posted some recipe videos earlier and I'll also show you a quick recipe that we use these fenugreek greens for and they're absolutely loaded with vitamins and minerals and a lot of nutrition. And after harvesting all the greens, this is how our fenugreek greens look like. Slightly larger than the microgreens, but also very delicious, quite loaded with flavor. And this is how you go from a microgreen to greens, which is exactly the same plant. So what did we do with the harvest? We mixed it up with some flour and we made methi puris the same recipe that I showed you in the previous episode, the monthly episode, where we roll it up into a dough with wheat and some spices and then make small rolls of the fenugreek and the flour together and then roll it up into a tortilla kind of shape and eventually we fry them to get these delicious methi puris and these are absolutely delicious. And you can eat them with yogurt, you can eat them with ketchup and they taste just absolutely amazing even just by itself. The methi puris taste amazing. This is how it looks like after it's made. But as I mentioned you can eat these fenugreek greens puris with either yogurt or ketchup and they taste amazing. And now let's look at pea microgreens. This was the other microgreens that we were growing right next to the fenugreek microgreens. And the planting method is the same. We are using three aluminum trays one for the base for the water and one the growing medium in the center which is a mix of coco core and worm castings and we're just spreading out our peas all around the growing area 
This has been pre-soaked for a few hours. And then we are lightly misting the top so that the seeds have adequate moisture to grow. Finally, we cover it up with the top layer, the top aluminum tray, and add some weight. And this weight will help the pea seeds settle down all around the container, the growing container. And 15 days later, our microgreens are ready. We will just harvest the pea microgreens just like you see here. So the peas have grown nice and bushy. And as you can see, it got pretty windy. So we had to continue harvesting our microgreens inside the home on this day. And I love pea microgreens. They just take a very short time to grow. They are absolutely delicious eaten raw. We mostly eat our pea microgreens raw. And they have just this amazing flavor, exactly like peas. Pea microgreens taste very much like snap peas or just peas when you eat them. And they're so easy to grow. They require absolutely no added nutrition in the growing medium. As you saw, we just used cocoa core and earthworm castings, which was enough nutrition for them to grow to this size very easily. And they not only look amazing, they taste absolutely amazing too. So pea microgreens is another microgreen that I would highly recommend that you try growing at home. We put them in Ziploc bags for storage in case we are not able to consume them completely. And as you can see, just one tray, just one aluminum tray will yield us a lot of microgreens. Now some people like to grow this in plastic as well, which is perfectly fine. I just think that food grade aluminum trays like these are a much better medium to grow microgreens. Because people bake in this, people eat out of these containers. So growing them is relatively safe compared to plastic. And this is how a microgreens harvest looks like. It looks amazing. And what did we do with the harvest? Let's show you how we used our pea microgreens. So the first thing we did is we chopped them up into smaller pieces. The pea microgreens are a very interesting shape. But we cut the microgreens into smaller pieces. And these smell amazing when you're cutting them too. These pea microgreens are one of the most fragrant and one of the most nice smelling microgreens that I've ever used. And most of the microgreens smell just like their actual plant, like radish microgreens would smell like radish and so on. And we are now adding all the other vegetables and making a pea microgreen salad. And as you can see, we have added cucumbers, carrots, spinach to our pea microgreens. And we are now squeezing some lemon on top of it. And you don't really need any dressing for your salad. Just lemon and olive oil is something that we always use. And it does a great job of giving a very good flavor to your salad. So add some olive oil on top. And just mix in the pea microgreens as well as all the other vegetables. To create a beautiful looking salad. And you can add some Himalayan salt. I love to add Himalayan salt compared to the white salt. Just because the Himalayan salt also has a lot of vitamins and minerals that you can add to your microgreen salad. So there we have it folks. That was our episode on growing microgreens and continuing to use the microgreens to grow larger plants as well. Let us know if you like this technique. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and the notification button for getting all future updates. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.